Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our contest this evening. We have a lot of really <coughs> wonderful people here, and it's going to be so much fun tonight. I've been told by Joan, where's Joan? Oh, she's hiding, sorry. She, our Toastmaster, oh, there she is. To remind everyone that you have to turn off your electronic devices, and this is a quote like your blueberries and your blackberries and your cell phones, uh, apples and other fruits. So turn off your cell phones and enjoy yourself this evening. I just love stories and I love good sermons or speeches or anything. And When my kids were younger, we were in a small town in Michigan. We went to this small church because the sign outside was very intriguing. It said something along the lines of, if you eat the bread of life, you won't have toast. You won't be toast or something like that. I said, okay, <laughs> this guy's got a sense of humor. I want to hear his sermon. So we walk in. And we're sitting there during the during the <coughs> the sermon, and the the collection plate comes around, and I realized I had left my wallet in the hotel. So I started digging through my purse, and all I could find was a dime. So I gave it to my little son, and he put it in the collection plate. <coughs> and it was over, and we were walking back to the hotel, and I said. You know, that sermon was really not very good. It wasn't funny like the sign out there. I, I didn't think it was very enjoyable. My son goes, well, Mom, I thought it was pretty good for a dime. <laughs> Sorry. There should be much better speeches after this, I promise. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our contest chair, Mr. Don Williams, double, triple, quadruple DTM. We're not sure yet. Ellen. Welcome fellow Toastmasters, contestants, dignitaries, and guests. I wanted to open today's contest with a quote. Uh, some of you who do know me from Facebook know that I'm someone who loves to share quotes with people abroad. With every experience, you alone are painting your own canvas, thought by thought choice by choice. And I think it applies to everyone in this room tonight, as well as our Toastmasters abroad in Chicago District 30. We're looking forward to a fantastic contest and to our contest contestants this evening. Each and every one of you are a winner. Out of 597 members in this division, you are the cream of the crop. You have the support of everyone in this room and we're looking forward to a fantastic evening. To get our contest going, our contest master is our contest master is someone who is well known through our district, has served our district well as a past district governor, and her three-year term is part of the trio. She helped to lead our district to distinguished status globally. Without further ado, I bring you. Past District Governor, DTM, Joan Moore. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, contestants, dignitaries, welcome to the Central North Division Humorous Speech and Evaluation Contest. First of all, I would like to recognize the dignitaries in the room. Because if you're a dignitary, you're a volunteer in Toastmasters, and you are spending your time on this wonderful organization. And we appreciate you investing in the organization and investing in the members. Help me recognize our District Director, Ms. Ethel Goatee.
host, Division Governor, Mr. Don Williams. And you've already seen Miss Improv Talk herself, Ellen Schnur, who is the Central South Division Governor. Yay, we have Northeast Division Director, Dan Mandelovitz. Director Lily Simmons. Yeah. And these are your most valuable players, your area directors. Yes. And we've got C21, Wayne Taylor. Presentations. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. <coughs> and Madam Sergeant at Arms, is that you, Ellen? Are you? Not that I know. All oh, right, Frank <laughs> and Matthew, could you please secure the doors? Let the contest begin. significant figure. I am 25 years old and most people my age probably have had a smartphone on average about 10 years. So for me to recently have a smartphone I, I believe is unique. Uh, part of that comes from, I'm from the Great White North, I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So it's on this hand, not when you refer to Michigan Upper Michigan, people think is over here, but I'm um, from the, the north. We get about 200 inches of snow every year. So we don't really have very good cell phone reception, so that was probably the reason why it didn't make sense to even have a smartphone. <laughs> but I've been, I've been impressed. Now I moved down to the big city, 
and work gave me a, a smartphone. I got the Apple 5C. And I am absolutely impressed with the technology. Um, I mean, for me to get here, you know, I plug the destination into Google Maps and they tell me exactly where to go. I just have to tell them point B, not even point A. They somehow know where I am and can give me the exact directions to get here. Then I think about the industry that's developed around the smartphone. You have companies like Uber, which I use quite frequently, and they pose this new wave of what of the American industry is moving towards. And we're no longer becoming a, a country that manufactures cars and develops. We're going to be software developers. And so with that, it's really challenging the way we do things. On top of that, I think another big thing that comes from this is connectivity. I'm capable of FaceTime and having an audio and visual conversation with someone halfway around the world. And that's impressive. But the problem is, with my generation and the economy of the United States is we don't think about how. We, America sells the how. So when I'm on Google Maps, I don't think of how to get here. I just know where I have to go. And that's kind of scary because even when we're in a car, we forget how it is we are getting there, and that how is you are driving the car. <laughs> and, and, it's, and I say this because you think about how many people are texting and driving. If you think about it, does it make sense that you should have your phone and be texting and driving while you're operating, you know, 3,000 pound plus piece of machinery? Or for instance, Uber, we don't think about how Uber works. All I know is I look on my phone and you hit the big button that says request Uber and there's a driver on my doorstep. And I think a lot of that comes from too is myself being a millennial. We have not grown up in a generation of knowing how to do something in some ways. You know, the, the big complaint is you know, I go to school, how I can't get a job, I don't know how to get a job, I, I, I don't have that. Whereas people such as my parents' generation were observers of their parents, my grandparents, and they had to observe people who started with nothing and watch them how they got to a point where they were prosperous and had a job. And so it's something to think about. Then you think about connecting. You think, oh, I have Facebook. I can connect with anybody. We know how. But it's ironic because we really don't know how. We, we might find friends on Facebook, set up an event where we all get together somewhere, bar, wherever. And you all come together. You're all sitting there at the bar, ready to have a good time. And you don't know how to communicate because everybody's sitting there on their smartphone and there's no dialogue. And I think all of us have experienced that. You sit on the train as I came down here and you see everybody's on their phone. Nobody's necessarily aware of even making that connection of acknowledging somebody's there. So for that, I have proposed three resolutions to help fight this. The first resolution or the first challenge I want to bring upon everybody is to not text and drive, for starters. Think about how. The second is when you're going outside and you're connecting with people. I, my friends and I have a game that when we're at the bar, there's no fact checking. Because we're always <laughs> arguing. <laughs> we're, always, we're always arguing about sports or you know, a date of this in history. And it's always a matter of the discussion ends on it was then, and the discussion is over. So it becomes a point of let's have that conversation. That's what conversation is all about. Let's argue about when, how many hits Miguel Cabrera has this year, or 
when was the last time the Cubs made the playoffs? <coughs> so, or, and the second challenge I want to bring about in the same situation is that we're so eager to pull out our phone and show pictures. We no longer say, hey, I had a recent trip to Florida. Let me describe what Florida was like. Let me try to engage you in a story and create that visual picture. Nowadays, it's check out my picture. That's me on the beach. You know, there's no, it's, it's no longer that interaction, that conversation <coughs> in, of engaging with that other person. It's to show them a picture on your phone. So I guess that is the three resolutions that I think we should all think about when we're doing something. Next time you go out, think about having to keep your phone in your pocket the entire night. Maybe unless you want to call an Uber on the way home and <laughs> have too many drinks. So that is my summary of two years with a smartphone. So I'd like to thank you all for your time. to see you, they want to see you do good. And that's the vibe I absolutely get while I'm at Toastmasters. So throw yourself out there. And I know after the Northeast Divisional Contest, the evaluations that I received were, they were so well done. And it was, it was, you know, they broke, they let you know what you did wrong, but they also made you feel comfortable. Like, keep at it, you can do it. So. I think one of the best parts of Toastmasters is the feedback we get on our speeches. Because that's how we improve. That's what it's all about. That's why we're here. And is that why you joined Toastmasters? To improve your speaking ability and your communication skills? Yes, yes. I think it's always been a problem, especially within the workplace. I'm more, I'm an engineer, but I'm very right-brained. So sometimes communicating with my coworkers, and then also we have to communicate with customers all around the world 
with all different um, education levels in English. So oftentimes when talking through a translator can be, you have to learn how to be concise and really know what words to use. And there's a lot of things with the English language and the, I guess the slang of it all, it's, you know, mm -hmm. some simple phrases people, they don't, it doesn't translate, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. so. And how do you find when you're talking through a translator, how do you find the body language helpful or is it a hindrance? Body language? Actually, I that's interesting you point that out because um, I've done work in Mexico and Brazil. And it's it's always funny because you know sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll have a translator or somebody who kind of knows English, but I'll, I'll say something to them, and it'll be a paragraph long. It'll be, and they look at the other guy and they whistle, you know, and their, their body language, and everybody's right on point. And even you find yourself in these moments where you spend days not knowing what anybody's saying. And, but it's kind of like you get into this routine, like nobody has to say anything. Their, their body language kind of tells you, you know, all right, we're breaking for lunch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, body language, the body language when you're doing a bad job is uh, <coughs> it's a little bit more noticeable. <laughs> incorporate body language in your speeches. That is common at communicator speech number five, so that is in store for you. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, I wanted to let you know that on Friday, I had a great opportunity to teach junior achievement to sixth graders, and I taught them about the global marketplace. And one of the things that struck me when I was teaching was how smart they are. And I think part of that is because of the technology that we have and the smartphone that we have. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Um, I mean, it, it's it's a reflection of how the world is operating, absolutely. But cognitively, you know, your development, I feel, needs to be more you know, you have to have a decent amount of recreation and stuff that's kind of breaking away in a sense from the technologies and to have the ability to, you know, compose yourself in life outside of the computer. And I think that's equally important. Right. I think the intelligence level was high, but I think one thing that they could work on was their social skills. And I think that's going to be missing with our advancement of technology. Just my personal opinion. Yes, yeah. Well, Thomas, we actually have a gift for you and a certificate for you being our test speaker today. Here's your certificate. Thank you. Thank Stay you. right there. Okay. Stay right there. Masters, distinguished guests, thank you for the opportunity 
of this evaluation contest, and today I will give I will be giving you my evaluation of the speech given by Thomas. The speech was titled "My Two Years with a Smartphone," and it, to me, the speech was perfectly timed because I just got a new smartphone, <laughs> <laughs> and this is probably my fifth smartphone. So I've been really into the high end of the technology side. But before I continue, let me ask a question. Who in this room has a smartphone? Can I see a show of hands? So I would say about 80%, 90%. And that's exactly what Thomas did. He really grabbed our attention immediately because we can all relate to having a smartphone. We all love the benefits, and I love the examples that he gave. He definitely connected with me, and he said, oh yeah, you can have a conversation across the world. Currently, my sister-in-law is working for the New York Times in Hong Kong, so every now and then we FaceTime with her, and it's free, and it's incredible, right? Over there, they are 13 hours ahead, and we are waking up, and she's uh, you know, going to bed, so it's, it's amazing. Technology is amazing. On the other hand, there is always a learning curve, right? So I definitely love the other example that he had about the maps. You know, how is it possible that they know where I am, right? And I just recently, even though I had five smartphones, I just recently started using Uber, and we love it. My wife and I were, are like hooked. We went to New York, oh, they just pick an Uber. Oh yeah, here, here it comes, I don't have to wait long. The driver is right there. So I definitely love the technology. Thomas did excellent with examples. I think he also did excellent with the eye contact. He was definitely, I, I could see him right from where I was sitting, and I could see him going across the room and trying to connect with everybody. I definitely also liked the three points that he mentioned that I think summarize and conclude the presentation very well. Not texting and driving is something that we shouldn't do. I work for AT&T and we have a big campaign about not texting and driving with many sad samples of accidents that have happened. So definitely very good point to wrap up your speech. The other two are also very good, right? Because I have been in conversations where I want to check the facts of you know, what my friend is saying or I you know, want to bring up some new facts facts. And sometimes, you know, it, it interrupts the conversation, so you don't want to do that. And the last part was also very good, that you don't want to show pictures. And this is really what my wife keeps telling me, to, you know, stop, leave your smartphone, and, you know, just start sharing the conversation. The last point I want to make is a couple of improvement areas. One is exactly what I did at the beginning maybe knowing the audience a little bit more, asking the question, how many people have a smartphone in the room? And the last one is using your platformer skills a little bit better, moving maybe to the other side, in addition to your eye contact. And those are my evaluation points for Thomas's speech. Thank you.
Steve. Approved. Evaluation, contestant number two. Evaluation, contestant number two, Steve Fruit. Tom, where, where are you, Tom? I'm looking for you. There you are. Thank you. Tom, what a wonderful speech. You made me very nostalgic for my childhood. Here you are, a fellow from the UP, Upper Michigan, not this Michigan, but this Michigan. <laughs> I spent some formative years in Massachusetts, this Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> we shared the trade of growing up in rural areas with no cell phones. Of course, when I was a kid, they hadn't been invented yet, <laughs> and your area just suffered from no cell phone reception. But it's almost like moving centuries or decades at least to come from an area like that into the big city where these infernal devices that they make us turn off at the start of this meeting tonight are just everywhere infiltrating every aspect of our lives. What you did was to call our attention to the many ways in which we don't even realize how, how these things are infiltrating our lives and affecting our behavior affecting our ability to memorize things because we're not relying on our memory. We can fact check, as you pointed out. It's affecting our communication with other people because they're very addictive. We just spend all of our time looking at these addictive advices. It's sort of like shooting digital heroin into our veins <laughs> and changing who we are, really changing who we are. You also used humor to make your points in your speech, which we enjoyed very much, especially the shot against Uber. You can always find a Uber driver anywhere. I took a taxi ride yesterday with a driver in Chicago who said they can't do anything but wait in the lines anymore because Uber, Uber has invaded everything else. Another example of how technology has changed everything. I loved your suggestions, Tom, on what to do about it. No texting while driving. Everybody knows that, but still people do it. No fact checking in bars. I love that one. <laughs> Had a good friend who knows every sports team back to the 1940s, baseball, football, basketball. How many kids today are going to grow up with that type of skill? It's just going to disappear. People like that will be dinosaurs in the future. Unless we can do something about it. And you suggested some great ways to do it. I liked how you use the generations. In, in my day, back in the day, the grandparents had the old kind of black phone that you put up to your ear like this. <laughs> Gone with the wind. But now we have these cell phones. But just a few suggestions, Tom. I thought you might use the stage a little bit more, uh, perhaps associated with the UP and over here in Chicago, or <laughs> use your imagination or something <laughs> like that. I thought could, you could use a bit more vocal variety and perhaps work on the justice. <coughs> but overall, I really, really enjoyed your speech. It was funny. It was to the point. It made me think. And keep them coming, Tom. Thanks very much. Ying Mani. Contestant number three, contestant number three, Ying Mani.
Toastmasters? Guess. Another great story by a Toastmaster member, Thomas. He shared a story about cell phones, how it can harm you, and how can it help you. <clears throat> I'm focusing on storytelling because the young lady spoke of it, and that's the essence of speaking. Tell a story, deliver a message. His story was, I am a 25-year-old young man. Connection with the audience. Do you all have one of these? I am trying to get to the bar. How can I use this to get there? He made sure he was safe in an Uber. He made a connection with the phone and the Uber driver to go to his friend's party at the bar to share the experience. Great storytelling. Circumstance all the way to the climax. Also, I was there with you while you were on your phone all the way to the bar. How can we make this storytelling skills of yours a speech? Next time you do this speech, you only have five to seven minutes. What's loose is lost. So let's start by connecting with the audience. How many of you have one of these? I am 25, <clears throat> and I have this, people my age have this for 10 years, and this has saved our lives. How? Because I want to get from my place down there. I called an Uber. I made sure we were safe to get to where we want to be. Then I had to make a connection with my Uber driver and my friends that we're still going to the same spot. <laughs> then I want to share an experience with my friends. Not through this, but through connecting with my friends. And then you got there. We can make this story better by you cutting out a lot of things, by focusing on safety, connecting, and experience. And in his speech, your introduction was great. Smartphone, we all were there with you. How can you make this relevant to everyone else? In a Toastmasters world, you have to connect with the audience. You have to take us to an experience, and the conclusion is the most important. Without connecting, there's nothing. Without taking through an experience of storytelling, there's no speech. Next time you do this speech, cut what's lost and focus on your message. And I guarantee you that'll be a great speech. And I also have to connect with my friends and my fellow Toastmaster members. Thank you. Ken Brzezinski, evaluation contestant number four, evaluation contestant number four, Ken Brzezinski. <laughs>
Thomas, you had elements of your presentation that lead to a good speech by anyone in our audience if they were to use those same elements. For example, you used hand gestures when you were describing Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Gestures like that make what you're describing real to an audience, concrete. Always a good technique. You also used humor in your speech, especially at the end where you said, keep your phone in your pocket unless you have to call Uber. Humor is a nice way to have the audience relax and relate to what you're saying. That too was a good technique that any one of you might use. Humor, gestures. You also have something which it's hard, going to be hard for me to duplicate. A nice deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. But with a deep voice, you can have vocal variety, which also makes the talk exciting. Of course, you're interested in how to make a speech even better, as we all are. That's why we're here. One way is to use a technique suggested by world champion Craig Valentine. Open with a question that drags the audience into your story. Tap and transfer. You might have said, do you have a cell phone that you've had for five years? Do you have a cell phone that you've had for 10 years? I have one only two years. Question, do you have? That's a nice way to do it. Another way to improve the speech, make it more real, connect more, something we all like to do, is use the stage. When you talked about your uh, friends who had cell phones for five, ten years, start in the past. I have friends that had cell phones for five years, ten years. Move I to the present. I've only had a phone for two years. The stage is a timeline. A timeline. Past, present, future. You might also use a technique to connect to the awareness of stepping out of the story. When you talked about Friends taking out their phone and calling Uber, you step out of the story and say, have you called Uber like that? Come on, you're someone who pulls out their phone and calls you. What that does, too, is break down that barrier between you and the audience. All techniques for connecting. What makes Toastmasters Toastmasters is that we learn in Toastmasters how to connect, to do more than just give information, but reach out, bring people in, connect. Very nice speech, had the three elements of humor, the voice, the gestures. If you add these techniques, stepping out of the story, for example, combine it with the three points you had at the end, and do what uh, Darren LaCroix does, speak and re-speak. You might find you have an excellent presentation, even better than it is now. Thank you.
Madam Toastmaster, all the ballots have been collected. about soaring for success on November 7th, 2015 at the Fall Conference for District 30 because I want each and every one of you to be there to soar for success. Now open your eyes. It's good. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> we got some exercise going on. Soaring for success, that is our theme this year. We want to soar. As our district director, she is, oh, we want to fly high, and we're gonna do that on the fall conference. November 7th, Countryside Banquets in Countryside. Now, everybody, hopefully there's a flyer out there, so I want everybody to use your smartphones, <laughs> use your iPads, use smoke signals like I tell some people, we go old fashioned way, and put that in your phone, in your iPad, and email it to everyone and tell them that it's going to be awesome because guess what? Just like Joan said, we have the 1999 world <coughs> champion public speaker, Craig Ballantyne. <laughs> He's going to have a soar to success, for success. We also, has anybody in here achieved any kind of top in a communicator or advance? Oh, wonderful. You are going to be invited to an Achievers Breakfast that morning. Okay, and it's on District 30, so it's free for you. Now, you really have another special thing that morning, too, because Craig Valentine, he's going to be speaking to the Achievers, so it's still enough time for everybody to get like a CC or an advance or anything like that to come to the breakfast. And from there, we're going to have our banner parade. So please raise your hand up high for your clubs. Bring your banners. Support your clubs. I know you're proud of them. I know I'm proud of mine. All five or six, but you can't count anyone now. <laughs> then from there, we're going to have some educational sessions. We're going to have a nice lunch there. Then we have the red carpet awards. I know every club or person achieved anything for the year 1415, you will be represented on the red carpet. And then from there, we're going to have, you know, I just forgot about some. You know what? Oh, wait a minute. People that went here, guess where they're going to go? To the District Humorous and Evaluation Contest. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot. That's the main thing, right? People are like, I want to win so I can get there. So. In the morning time, we'll have our evaluation contest. In the afternoon, we'll have our human speech contest. We'll have Craig Valentine. We'll have a lot of eagles flying that day, <laughs> each and every one of you. And I just want to tell you very much that please, 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 text, type, smoke signals. Yeah. November 7th, Countryside Banquets, Countryside, Illinois. It's on the website, and you can register now. And none other than at the end, 
before you all go home that night, every person that had their DTM will be awarded their DTM and we will hug them and welcome into the family. So at that end, we were gonna end it well. And I see some people already cheering the back say, yeah, I got my DTM. So that's good, so you get to celebrate that night. We'll all celebrate with you. And on that note, I will bring back our Toastmaster.